Hello, we're going to talk today about how to solve IR and carbon-13 combined spectral problems. So you learned how to do IR previously and how to interpret those spectra, and you've looked at carbon-13 and how to interpret those. So now we're just going to do some practice problems when you have both pieces of data. And I'm going to do it where you have the tables so that we can practice doing tables like you would be expected to put into your lab report for 201. So we're going to start with um, the molecular formula. I've got a molecule with three carbons, eight hydrogens, and an oxygen. Uh, so I already know I have an oxygen and I come over to my IR and I'm just going to start looking through. Uh, when I see this peak here, the big rounded one at 30, it says 3,400. So that's our OH. So we knew we have an OH and that fits with our molecular formula. Then we have some CH stretches. Remember that everything above oh, 2,700 is usually bonded to hydrogen. So here's an OH. These are CHs, but that's not sufficient. If it's below 3,000, I need to specify that this is sp3 carbon hydrogens. So that fits because I don't have any double bonds in, to carbon um, indicated there. And then our next big peaks are here around 1,100. And that's pretty classic for a carbon oxygen single bond stretch, so CO. And usually, and then everything down here below a thousand, we usually ignore fingerprint region for our, this course. So three big peaks. We already have a pretty good idea. We have an alcohol of some sort. Let me look at our carbon 13. And I have at 64 an sp3 carbon, because, oops, sp3. Uh, everything below about 100, right, is sp3. But this is all the way at 64, so it's probably next to a hetero atom, something um, electronegative. And in this case, we already know we have an oxygen, so this must be the carbon that's bonded directly to the oxygen. Then we have two other sp3 carbons, and they're probably bonded to the hydrogens, right? So we could just put sp3 carbon hydrogen because we don't know how many hydrogens. So now we're gonna try to pull together a structure that fits for this. And I have three unique carbons. So I have three carbons, a propane, and I only have two options really. I have, for propane, I only have two possible isomers, propanol. And for this one, I would have three unique carbons, but for this one, these two methyls would be the same. So I must have one propanol for this structure. And then we're going to go to the next one. Oh, and look, my IR looks almost the same. So again, the big rounded OH. So here I have an OH. I have carbon hydrogens below 3,000. So we have an OH group. We have an sp3 carbon hydrogen. And then at 1200, we have our CO. And again, everything below 1000, we're going to mostly ignore. So we have some CO stretches. And now we only have two peaks in our carbon. So we have some symmetry because we have three carbons, but only two peaks. And this one is next to the oxygen, and this one's a CSP3 carbon. So we have CO and SP3 carbon. And so now, because we have symmetry, this is our other isomer. This is the 2-propanol with the symmetry, where the two methyls here are both showing up at this peak. Okay. So let's try. Well, uh, one more. Okay, similar. Um, now we're going to look again down here, and I don't have an OH. This is very small. Don't get hung up on that. 
this isn't um, a real peak. It's probably an overtone. This is, again, my sp3 carbon hydrogens. And then at 1700, I'll put this in here, sp3 carbon hydrogen. 1720 is the classic carbon double bond oxygen. And then round 1400, that's just carbon carbon stretches. And then we often see this peak around 1200. And for the most part, I really, this is, um, I really don't think you'll need to fill this in for a table, but it's usually this carbon carbon um, near, near a carbonyl. So I would say don't put this into your table for 201. Focus in on the peaks that you do know. Then you have two other peaks. Above 200 is a carbonyl again. And specifically, this is either a ketone or an aldehyde. And you can specify that in your table because this is not an ester or an amide or an acid. This is a ketone or an aldehyde. Remember those, anything with a hetero atom and not a carbon or hydrogen show up around here, whereas the ketones and aldehydes show up above 200. And then we have an sp3 carbon showing up at 30 something. So this is our sp3. And we have symmetry again because I have two carbons showing up, but I have three carbons in my spectrum. So I'm going to draw a symmetric carbonyl, and that's acetone to propanone. I have a plane of symmetry goes through the middle of the molecule, and I have a methyl on both sides that will both show up here at 30. Now I'm going to do one more structure for you. It's going to get a little bigger, a little more complicated. So we have a molecular formula that's C8H8O2. And I go look at my carbons immediately and, oh, I don't know what's here. There's a bunch of peaks, but they show up between 120 and 140. So I'm going to assume right now that this is an aromatic ring, six-membered carbon aromatic ring. So I'm going to call that six carbons, and then here's seven and eight. So that gives me my eight carbons. So the aromatic ring here, and if I look close, I think I have one, two, three, four. And so that looks to me like possibly some, well, I have some symmetry, and we're going to come back and fill this in, but I often see four carbons if I either have a one or two di substituted one four. So, or a mono substituted. So we'll come back to that um, because they would both give me a plane of symmetry here. If I have a carbon there and if I have a carbon with, of, or something else over here, as long as these two aren't the same. So I go look at my IR and I have a carbon double bond oxygen and I have some different peaks in here um, between 1600 and some down below 1500 that looks like an aromatic ring so and then i look over here and i have some sp2 carbon hydrogen and some sp3 carbon hydrogen so above 3100 or above 3000 these are sp2 so maybe that should be its own column and below 3000 this is an sp3 carbon hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond. Then we have a carbonyl, and then I have an aromatic ring, and then I have a carbon oxygen at 1250. Now notice we saw something before around this with a ketone, but it wasn't big like this, and I have an echo at 1100, which is another indicator because that gives me if I have an ester, I'm going to have two different CO stretches, the sp2 to carbon oxygen and the sp3 to carbon oxygen. So it looks like I have an ester and an aromatic ring. 
This would go back to the carbon to double check, but 167 is pretty classic for an ester shift. Remember, ketones and aldehydes showed up above 200, and esters and acids and amides, the acid chlorides, so things with a heteroatom here, show up at 165, somewhere between 160 and 180. So now I've got an aromatic ring. I'm coming back to this. I'm going to fill that in a little more. And then I have a carbon at 54. So this is an sp3 carbon, probably next to an oxygen. sp3, because it's below 100, carbon, oxygen. So that fits over here. If I start to draw this, now I've used up all my carbons and my oxygens. So I've got a carbon. I've got an ester and I have a methyl next to it because that's the only carbons I've got. So that means this is a mono substituted, which fits. So you can go ahead and call this a mono substituted. You should be as clear as you can in these tables for your lab reports. So you have now, based on that, we came up with a good structure pretty quickly with the IR and the carbon 13. And you saw I went back and forth between them and I used my uh, molecular formula up here. So there's more problems in the online book. There's more if you go through the resources and there's some in your workbook you can practice. So take some time, go through and practice some of these on your own. These are also all in your workbook so you can look at them and practice them again without and check your answers. Okay, have fun doing some spectral problems. <laughs>